Welcome to MAKE, a course taught at the University of South Florida. This is an update of our earlier tutorial about using RFID readers with the Arduino. We will discuss the basics of RFID communications and then discuss how to use an RFID reader breakout board with the Arduino. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. The basic principle of communication between the reader device and the so-called tag is via electromagnetic field which is emitted from, the, uh, from a coil connected to the reader device. The coil connected to the uh, transponder receives the electromagnetic field and the field generates an electrical current in the uh, circuit of the tag. This current is used to power the tag as well as to transmit information to the tag. I used this book by Daniel Dobkin, DRF and RFID, to learn some of the background of RFID communications. It is highly recommended. Um, it has a very uh, applied language, which is easy to understand. So if you want to learn more about the uh, background of RFID, then this book is highly recommended. The interaction between the electromagnetic field emitted from the reader and the current induced in the tag enables uh, two-way communication. One, the wave is directly received and the current powers the tag and the information can be extracted from this signal. Alternatively, since a current is being induced in the antenna of the tag, this current itself emits an electromagnetic field again. This electromagnetic field can be received in the reader. This is called a backscattered signal. By uh, modulating the backscattered uh, signal, we can transmit uh, digital information. The practical way to do this is to change the load that is attached to the antenna on the tag. By using a switch, for example a transistor, that connects the antenna to ground or disconnects it, we can transmit ones and zeros uh, back to the reader. This shows the principal circuit of an RFID tag. The reader emits a carrier wave that is amplitude modulated with the transmitted data. This enables to have a constant electromagnetic field impinging on the antenna of the, of the tag because remember the tag is being powered by the EM wave that is coming from the reader. So we cannot do ones and zeros by turning on and off the transmitted uh, wave because in the off periods we could run out of power uh, on the tag. So what is really done is the signal is modulated between ones and zeros uh, in the with the amplitude and the, the smaller amplitude is still enough contains still enough power to uh, uh, drive the tag. So once the uh, current is induced in the, in the antenna, we have essentially two circuits. One circuit takes care of the power supply of the processor uh, that is on the uh, tag. There we simply have a diode in the simplest case that is uh, connected to a, a capacitor against ground. And if we make this capacitor big enough, then the incoming RF wave after rectification is then turned into a, uh, a more or less constant DC bias. At the same time we extract the uh, data in the uh, reader stream uh, by using a uh, envelope detector. This is essentially the, is the same circuit except that we use a much smaller capacitor so that the output signal after this uh, diode actually adjusts quickly with the amplitude of the incoming um, electromagnetic wave. Now we understand how the digital circuit on the tag is being powered and how the data comes from the reader uh, to the circuit. Now if the circuit is supposed to talk back, uh, for example um, providing the name of the tag owner or an amount of money that is stored on the tag, then the uh, uh, integrated circuit needs to uh, transmit dig uh, digital signal back to the reader. And this is done by changing 
the load that is connected to the antenna. So in the easiest case you can just have a transistor that connects or disconnects the antenna from uh, the ground on the tag. By doing so the current changes strongly in the antenna and that changes the electromagnetic signal that is being emitted from the antenna. So this backscattered signal can then be received by the reader and evaluated. It is interesting to note that this happens while the reader actually emits its own electromagnetic wave because the uh, circuit on the tag needs to be powered during the transmission. That poses the interesting problem that a strong electromagnetic signal is coming in while a much weaker signal is being transmitted back uh, and so the reader device needs to be able to distinguish between these two signals. The RFID reader and the uh, tags that come with the Arduino kit, they are based on the MyFair um, protocol. So this is a, a passive card like we just discussed and the power comes from the transmission from the uh, reader device. The cards have a one kilobyte memory and they are encryptable. They also have a processing unit that is capable of doing arithmetic operations so one can for example change an amount uh, of uh, money that is stored on the on the card. The operating frequency is uh, 13.56 megahertz. There are several uh, standards for RFID cards uh, that are based on different frequencies depending on the application. This particular technology is optimized for short-range communication. Uh, the data sheet says uh, 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters are possible, but it depends strongly on the antenna geometry. Uh, my experience with these uh, transmitters and the cards that come with the Arduino kit is that they are rather working only in one or two centimeters distance. Um, that is a frequently used technology for cash cards or building access where uh, one needs to make sure that cards are not accidentally uh, read um, when people just walk by the, uh, the reader devices so that one really has to put the card on top of the reader device to initiate um, any communication. Here is a basic block diagram of a MyFair RFID card. Uh, first we have the RF interface that essentially deals with uh, power and data extraction. We saw that on the previous slide. Then we have a uh, UART um, interface that's a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. We have a logic unit that uh, can do calculations and operations on the data. And then we have some digital circuitry that contains of electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, EEPROM, that's for storage. Then we have several mechanisms here that help to make the data storage and transmission more secure. So we have error detection, it's called cyclic redundancy check, so there's some math performed that um, yields some expected results and if they are not being as expected then we know there is an error. Uh, then we have a random number generator uh, on this chip. Uh, this is for security purposes. This is used to send a, a security question back to the reader device that then needs to produce an answer that is known to the, um, to the, to the tag, to the card. And then we also have an encryption uh, section on this chip that allows to actually encrypt the data that is being stored on the chip. Remember, these cards are often being used for uh, financial transactions or building access uh, security kind of purposes. So all this is pretty important um, in order to uh, achieve a secure data transmission. This slide shows the uh, structure of the uh, EEPROM memory. We have essentially uh, 16 sectors that uh, each have four blocks of data and each block has uh, 16 bytes on it. So that gives us in total uh, one kilobyte of memory on the chip. So each fourth block of each sector 
the, the marked gray here, they uh, contain security keys and access bits. So one can individually block access to certain uh, blocks and also ask uh, security information before access is granted. Here we see the Fritzing diagram how to hook up the MF522 RFID reader uh, to the Arduino. So we're having seven pins on the, uh, on the reader. Uh, two of them are being used for power and the remaining ones are used for communicating. The communication with the chip is performed via the uh, SPI bus. The SPI is different from the I2C bus in that it uses three uh, lines to communicate as instead of just two. Uh, that, uh, the, the reason for that is we have one line that is uh, reserved for communication from the master to the slave and then we have a line called MISO MISO um, that uh, is for communication from uh, the slave to the master. So we have MOSI and MISO for communication and of course then the third line is the clock line that essentially defines the um, the uh, uh, timing of the bits that uh, are being transmitted. Individual devices are not selected via uh, addresses on the bus like with the I2C protocol. Here we rather have um, so-called slave select lines, SS lines and these lines, um, each of the uh, uh, connected devices needs to have its own uh, slave select line. That means that you need to have a pin for each of the devices uh, that you connect to the Arduino uh, via the SPI bus. There's another uh, tutorial about the SPI bus that um, gives a few more details about the communication protocol and some specifics about how to uh, use it with the Arduino. It's interesting to note that the reader uh, device uses 3.3 volts. Um, luckily the Arduino has a 3.3 volt uh, output so we use this to connect it. If you would connect it to the 5 volts uh, pin then uh, that would destroy the um, reader device. The communication pins are apparently 5 volts tolerant the data sheet is not specific about this and usually this is not something to take granted uh, for such devices that use 3.3 volts but in this case uh, all over the internet people are directly connecting it to the 5 volts Arduino output pins so it seems to be tolerant to 5 volts. The proper way to do it would be to actually put a level shift or chip in between the Arduino outputs and the um, um, reader inputs. Please note that there's also a slightly different version of the RC522 shield. This shield breaks out the I2C bus pins. You see here the SDA uh, pin that is uh, doubling as the slave select line for the SPI bus setup that we are using here. So in case you find this breakout board uh, in your Arduino kit, then please connect the SDA line instead of the SS line like for the other breakout board that I showed in the previous slide. Everything else is pretty much the same. The pins are in a slightly different order. So you have SCK, MOSI and MISO. There's also a pin called IRQ. This pin is not used at all. I think it has to do with uh, interrupts and then there here is the usual ground connection and the 3.3 volts connection so this one here also needs to be connected to 3.3 volts don't use the 5 volts and this here is the reset pin everything else is exactly the same the Arduino sketch works exactly the same the only thing you need to uh, keep in mind is that the SDA pin doubles as the slave select pin on this breakout board here you see the entire setup. These are the SPI bus connections. So you see here that the SDA is connected to pin 10. So that's the slave select line. And here we just have the reset and the two power connections. In the following demonstration, we use the initially discussed breakout board. So here you don't have the SDA pin. Those four pins, they are the SPI bus pins here, master in, slave out 
the serial clock, the slave select pin and the uh, master out slave in uh, pin. Then this is ground here 3.3 volts and the reset pin. So over at the Arduino we see that here. There we use the uh, the SPI bus pins, and this is the uh, the reset. And over here, it is connected to 3.3 and ground. Okay, let's start playing with the uh, card reader. I uh, decided to use um, examples and a library that uh, can be found on the internet, and it's available to all for free. Um, if you go to GitHub. Uh, here um, there is the Arduino RFID library for MFRC522 and this comes with some examples and so we're now using the um, the dump info uh, example sketch which allows to essentially just see what is uh, what is the current content of that 1k um, EEPROM that is on the um, a card. So let's upload the sketch. Here it is. So we start out uh, with including the SBI bus uh, library. This is necessary to communicate with the card and then we include that uh, library that we just saw on, on GitHub. Um, then we define the pins. So we have the slave select pin is number 10 and the reset pin we use number 5 just like you just saw it on the um, fritzing uh, schematic. Here we instantiate the, the card reader and then we go into the setup loop. Here we open a communication channel on the serial port with 9600 baud. Then we start the SPI bus, we initialize the card reader and we print um, that now it is time to scan um, a card. Okay, so here this is the main loop and there is basically just three um, methods that are being used from this library. The first one is um, check if there is a card present. And so this uh, if statement, what it does is it simply checks, uh, runs this method until it returns one. And if it returns one, then we go on to the further um, to the to the methods down here. If it doesn't return one, then we simply return to the beginning of the loop. So we just run here until a card is present, and then we go down here. So once a card is present, we uh, execute the read card serial method, which returns the uh, ID of the card that was identified, and that is written into the UID struct that is just a memory uh, structure that contains a few variables which contain the uh, uh, card essentials and that is then used by all further uh, interactions with this card. Um, this allows to um, have several cards in the vicinity but only pick one and then interact with that one uh, for all further commands. So once that is done then um, we go to the uh, dump to serial a message which simply reads out all the data blocks that are on the card and prints them to the serial port. It is important to note here that one needs to hold the card for the entire duration of that dump uh, to the card reader that can take a couple seconds or three. If you remove the card while this method is running then uh, you will get some uh, error messages. Let's try this out. So all we have to do now is put the card in front of the card reader and let it sit there for a few seconds. And then turn on the serial monitor to see the um, dump of the card memory. So here I'm turning on the serial port and now is the moment when I hold the card to the reader. And so you see that all the blocks are being read out. So the uh, dump starts with the user ID of the card and then we have the card type. It's a one kilobyte card of the MyFair protocol. And then you see the dump of all the uh, sectors and the blocks. So each sector has four blocks 
um, and with 16 sectors and 64 blocks. These here are the 16 bytes in each of the blocks and the, the uh, fourth block of each sector uh, where you see here the FFs. This is the uh, trailer block which contains the access information and security keys to the uh, 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 blocks within the sector. The, the first six bytes are key A and the last six bytes are key B. Only key B is visible in this dump. Key A shows up at zeros even though the card uh, when it's fresh from the manufacturer contains uh, FFs in each of those bytes also. These four bytes, these are the, the uh, bytes that contain the uh, flags that control access to the keys and to the, um, to the bytes in the blocks. It is a very good idea to never um, write into these um, uh, trailer uh, uh, blocks since it is possible to make blocks uh, unusable uh, if one writes something in there and cannot remember what exactly is in there. Okay, so let's scroll down and so we see the content of all the blocks and so we have now um, Oh, and what you see down here is I removed the card a little bit too early so uh, we weren't able to read out the first uh, three blocks um, of it. But it would look exactly the same like here. So let's see um, how we can write into these blocks and then read them out again. So I wrote a sketch to um, demonstrate uh, writing into a block and then uh, reading it back. So we start here with the uh, with including the SPI library and we include the um, the library for the RFID reader. Like in the last sketch, we're using uh, the uh, uh, pin 10 as slave select pin and um, 5 as the reset pin. Here we instantiate the uh, reader. Um, then here we um, instantiate the um, a struct named key that uh, contains the uh, card information and then we go into the setup where we have again um, a serial where we start the serial port at 9600 baud we start the SPI bus uh, we initialize initialize the uh, card and uh, or initialize the reader and then um, we print here uh, an invitation to scan the card and so here now uh, before we quit the setup uh, function we uh, we put in the security key into the uh, into the key struct that we um, created above and so we put here six times uh, FF which is just the uh, standard uh, key A um, if the card is new from the manufacturer okay and then um, we define some um, global variables and arrays. Uh, here we just say okay we want to um, write into block 2 so you could change this here to anything from 0 to, uh, to 63 but you should take care not to write into the trailer blocks. Then we have arrays. Uh, one is the array that we write into the block, block content, so that has 16 bytes and we uh, write in make course and then a few underscores to fill the block. Uh, I put another block here in case you wanted to delete it again to make the card like new. Um, so just uh, you could uncomment this line and comment out this one here and then you could uh, write the zeros back into this block. Then we uh, define a second array which has uh, 18 bytes. This is the, the array we, write, we read the block back into. This array needs to be two bytes longer because there is some overhead information um, that comes out of the read uh, method. Okay, now here we have the, um, the main loop. And so like in the previous sketch, we establish contact with the card and then we read out the uh, basic card information, the user ID. And then um, after printing card selected, if everything worked up there, we go into the write block function. And so the functions are here in this tab. I'll talk about those in a sec. And then after we write the uh, block content, 
uh, into this block number two as we specified above then we'll read it back into the read back block um, array and then we print we read the block and uh, we then um, print into the serial port the contents of this block there's one thing that we didn't use before we used the serial write command instead of serial print write um, uh, prints the um, prints bytes as um, uh, in the ASC as specified in the ASCII ASCII uh, code and so this uh, turns the uh, numbers that are written into the card that correspond to um, the, the string that we put make course and the underscores it turns them back into characters and so we can actually read it directly on the serial port okay let's have a look at the functions here the first one is write block so we have the block number and the and the array address um, the, the pointer to the to the to the array uh, as parameters and so in the at the beginning we try to make sure that we don't accidentally write into a trailer block since the trailer blocks are modulo 4 essentially but it's that it starts at 0 we do some math here and then um, if we determine the block is a trailer block we print it is a trailer block and we'll return an error code uh, number two otherwise we print uh, the block number is a data block and then we go on uh, to write the uh, block into or the, the array into the block uh, first we need to authenticate so this is basically we send now the uh, uh, a trailer a uh, over and um, for that particular s sector we want to write into and then once the authentication uh, works out we go on and write the block here we have uh, in case it didn't work out so if, if the status here is not one then um, we have an, an, an error message here that the authentication failed and we return uh, to the main sketch but if everything worked then we go uh, here into the uh, myfair write method and we write basically into that block number and the the array and it's the length of the array is 16 and again if it didn't work right then status would be uh, not one and so we could uh, generate an error message here and error code four but if everything works then we end up here and we print the block was written so the second function call was reading the block back here we have that that function that reads the block so again we have the block number and the uh, a pointer to the array we write the block back into so here we need to determine the trailer block again for that particular block number and then we authenticate again so every every time you read or write you have to authenticate uh, here again an error message in case it doesn't work but if it works we go here uh, into the reading a block part and um, we specify here the buffer size is 18 for some reason that my fair read method requires a pointer to the variable in which the buffer size is um, stored and so this is why I uh, created a variable here with the buffer size into it and then we here the ampersand um, before the uh, variable name uh, says okay this is a pointer to that variable and so this is ho how the um, method gets the buffer size otherwise it's like the read uh, method so we have the block number and the uh, the pointer to that array into which we want to put the read back data again here for error handling in case it doesn't work and then if it works we end up here and we print the block was red okay let's see how this works so I'm turning on the uh, uh, actually we should upload it and um, so it's uploaded and we start the serial port so we see here scan a myfair classic card and now I hold the card against the reader and so we see here we get all this all these uh, uh, printed strings so card selected two is a data block 
the block was written, the block was read, and the red block is make course. And here this is probably the, the end of a string character. This concludes our tutorial using RFID readers with the Arduino. Thanks for watching.